So before we start guys, as always remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these tutorial style videos. And if you have any questions about what's in this video, or any other maths question, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll get round to answering you. So the reason we use thirds is because when we calculate with them, we don't need to use our calculators and we can still have exact answers. So the square root of two, written out as a decimal, I've shown it here, it goes on and on and on and it keeps going infinitely long. So it's what we call an irrational number. It doesn't terminate on a certain digit. And the same can be said for root 3, root 7, root 11, any, any uh, non-square number put into the third is going to give you an irrational number. So by representing it as a third with this square root sign, we can just put that down on paper and using that we can accurately calculate using these numbers. So the first rule that we need to know when working with thirds is quite a simple one. So let's say we have the square root of 49 and then let's square it. So we can work this out in stages. The square root of 49, well 49 is a square number, that's just 7 squared. So this is going to work out to be 7 inside the brackets and we're going to square that. And if we square 7 we get back to 49. So all this shows us is that the square root sign is in fact the opposite of squaring. So we've got back to where we started here. Or another way of thinking about it is squaring cancels out the root sign. So that's our first rule that we need to remember when dealing with thirds. The next rule is the multiplication rule. So this is an example here of how it works. Root 4 we can work out, 4 is a square number, so root 4 is going to be 2. And root 25 is obviously going to be 5. We can work this out now numerically and that's just going to equal 10. Well now let's think about how I could write the number 10 as a third. So I'm going to need my, my root sign and it's going to equal 10. What is the number that's going to go inside that root sign? Well thinking back to our uh, squaring, cancelling out our square rooting, if we just squared 10 and put it in here, which is 100, we'd get root of 100 equals 10. So this means that if these two thirds equal 10 and this third equals 10, then multiplying root 4 by root 25 should equal root 100. So here we can spot our rule, our multiplication rule in effect. This 4 multiplied by the 25 in fact gives us the number inside this combined root. So when multiplying roots together, we take our first number inside the root and the second number inside the second root, and we can combine those into one root by multiplying the numbers together. So the sign in between the A and B here is a multiplication sign. So the next rule that we need to know is the division rule for thirds. So again, using this as an example, let's work it out. The square root of 36 we know is 6, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we can work this out as 3. So now, just like before, let's think about what number I could write inside the root sign to equal 3. So you've probably figured out that it's got to be 9, because the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So this means that, again, this root of 36 over root of 4 equals root 9. So because this root 9 is equal to 3, and this initial fraction here is also equal to 3, they must in turn be equal to each other. So we can again spot the division rule here. Our 36 divided by our 4 equals the 9 in this combined root on the right hand side. So this is the rule, our first number and our second number can be combined in a single root by dividing the top one by the bottom one. So root A over root B is the same as putting a big root across that fraction there. 
So using these three rules that we've just had a look at, I've got four questions here for you to have a go at. So pause the video, have a go at those, and I'll show you the answers. So here are the solutions to those four questions. Hopefully you got those right. And now let's move on to looking at slightly trickier problems. So you'll often come across thirds as mixed numbers like this, where they have an integer in front of the root sign and a number inside the root sign. So all this means is that we have omitted this multiplication sign between the two numbers. So this actually is 2 multiplied by root 3. And this here is just 10 multiplied by root 12. So the reason we do this is these combined numbers are simpler to work with in calculations. So say I had 2 root 3 multiplied by 5 root 2. The way to approach this question is to think about the numbers and the thirds, so the number part of the question and the third part of the question separately. So if I wrote the multiplication sign in between the 2 and the root 3, and then between the 5 and the root 2, well, I can move these parts about. I can do 2 times the 5 multiplied by the root 3 times the root 2. And using our previous rules, you know that, well, you know that this 2 times 5 is 10, and you know that the root 3 times the root 2 is going to be root 6. And now I can omit this multiplication sign and write it simply as 10 root 6. But of course, just looking at these two combined thirds at the start, you can do this more or less in your head. You can do the number part multiplied by the number part gives me the bit in front, the 10, and then we combine the thirds using the third rules to get root 6. Now this also works with division as well. So here I've got 10 root 12 divided by 2 root 6. So the process works exactly the same. I've got 10 times root 12 divided by 2 times root 6. Now I could sort of rearrange these if, if I wanted to. I could separate this into two fractions, my 10 over 2 multiplied by my root 12 over root 6. And then I can work out this 10 over 2 is going to be 5. And using my division rule for thirds, I know that this second third is going to be root 2. So combining those, I get 5 root 2. So again, this process you can do in your head. Just do this first number divided by this first number gets me the 5. And then combine the roots into a single root as root 2. So again, I've written out these rules, this time incorporating an integer in front of our thirds. And again, there are three questions here for you to have a go at. So pause the video. And here are the solutions to those questions. So notice here in this first question, I got root 36 halfway through my working. And immediately I realized that this 36 was a square number. So I could write root 36 as an integer as the number 6 and so the answer worked out to be a nice whole number like that. So be careful when you're doing questions, sometimes you'll come across root of a square number and you'll be expected to simplify that into an integer. So there we go, those are the third rules that we need to know for calculating exactly with thirds.